Welcome to the Stuff and Things Podcast. Your home for all stuff related to your favorite things in entertainment. Now, here are your hosts. Hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of the Stuff and Thangs podcast. It's Walking Dead Wednesday once again. We're back with a catch-up episode after missing one week. I am Sam, joining me to discuss two episodes of The Walking Dead, my partner in crime, it's Stefan. Back with a double feature. How are we doing? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Let's get stuck straight in because we do not have enough time for two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 20, the title of that episode was... What's Been Lost. True. Um, so so basically, um, I mean, I've got my kind of bullet points to walk through this episode. Um, I think the, the first the key thing is, the last episode we recorded, a, a key detail we missed off was the fact that the very last scene, Rosita was grabbed. Yes. And it was kind of like, we had so much to discuss in that episode, and it kind of got to that last bit, and we were like, oh crap, we missed that, how the hell did we miss it? Um, I put it into the write-up and everything when I put it out there, and we put the show out, but going into this episode, it it was a very key detail, because not only was Rosita (laughs) grabbed, it would appear (laughs) that all of the Alexandrians, basically everybody was being rounded up. Um, with only Daryl and Carol seemingly evading capture. Naturally, um, naturally. Of, of the two uh, of all of them that could possibly be evading capture, I, I kind of feel bad for the Commonwealth that it was those two. Yeah, like if it had been just like you know a couple of normal sort of people, fine. Eugene, maybe. Or, yeah, or like Aaron, for example, cool character, yeah. but. Aaron's not exactly going to go around tearing up trees. No. Whereas these two, <laughs> the two to have left out, you're like, oh dear. Yeah, the, 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 these two are about to wreck some shit. Um, the the also we also see. I mean, me and you kind of discussed for a while the Pamela Milton thing of is she actually villainous? Is she just you know political operator? How much has she been aware of the darker side of the Commonwealth? And it's been quite a fun debate to be had, where we've not really known exactly where she is. Um, For me, in the previous episode, with her son dying and her basically leaving the reanimated version with Hornsby and making Hornsby basically cut up one of his old colleagues to feed her son, it was kind of like, yeah, okay, <laughs> she's snapped, she's not a good, she's not good. Yeah, <laughs> we, we've established that. Going across there, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we, we've kind of established now. Um, I think in this episode, we can safely say absolute confirmation, 100%. Because she's also now working ice cold to reinforce her power, basically. Um, yeah. and she's one not of a good th- guy, no. No. <laughs> she has organised all of the people to be rounded up and drugged and taken, including the children. Yeah. And she is blackmailing Yumiko to prosecute Eugene. Um, what are you... Because obviously Yumiko has a bit of a kind of a... Uh, a, a journey, if you like, in her own during this episode where <clears throat> she is blackmailed with the lives of all of her friends and all of the people that she, you know, she made a home with. Um, and she has to kind of make a decision on what she's going to do. What did you think of Yumiko's episode? What, what did you think about her decision and ultimately her decision at the end to stick a middle finger up to Pamela? As soon as she got her brother to stand up, I knew yeah. what she was doing. As soon as yeah. she got her brother, I was like, you've just made everyone aware so he cannot go missing. Like, everyone yeah. now knows, oh, that was very clever. Yeah. Um, but there was bits of it that made me chuckle as well. Like, she goes and visits Eugene in the cell. Yeah. And minus the whole fingers on a chalkboard every time Eugene speaks with his stupid kind of 
Oh, I fully accept that I know that I did some wrong. Right, yeah, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're well aware that, you don't like him yet. Carry on. The fact that there was two guards stood mere feet away either side. Yeah. And they're discussing all this stuff, and I'm like, are those guards not going to say anything to anyone? Like, yeah, they could definitely overhear the fact that those two were plotting something. And they're both yeah. just kind of stood there like, yeah, another Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> well, well, to be fair, they, they could well be like that. <laughs> just like fed up, don't really want to be there. You know, uh, what time do I clock off? <laughs> yeah, I'm bored today. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, the missus said there might be lasagna later. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, so, but in yeah, terms no, of it, it I, was I kind of very but, backwards but, and forwards. But, but backwards overall, forwards. Yumiko, did you agree with her decision in the end? Or do you think she should have gone along with Pamela's wishes? <sighs> I mean, now, depends. Personally, yes, hang Eugene, go with Pamela. But... Right story mode and stuff, I can see why she's done what she's done. They are her people. She is not part of the Commonwealth. She knows that Eugene didn't necessarily do wrong as such. Yeah. He pushed him, but not murdered him sort of thing, you know. And yeah. A lot of people were stood there watching by. So in, in terms of her being a good lawyer and following the law, she's done the right thing. And in terms of her being a good friend to her people, she's done the right thing. Yeah. We'll just find out quite how bad that will go. I mean, I, I mean, like, to me, I was looking at it, and as the episode was progressing, I was thinking to myself, there's just no way Pamela lets them all go. You know, yeah. because she's taken them all, drugged them all, dragged them off in the night. How could they, how could they possibly be reintegrated back? Yeah, Did that ain't going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's just not, you know... All these people you were like, oh wow, Ezekiel, where did you go? Well, I got drugged and dragged off. And uh, sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, it's it's just impossible. So as the episode was progressing, I'm thinking, Mr. Yumiko, you actually don't have the choice here because she, you must realize that there, there's like nothing. There, there is no good scenario. There is no okay. Come on, we're all back together now. Everything's fine. Because even if Pamela was so naive to release them back into the population, there's no way they'd all take that line down. I mean, she knows Daryl, she knows Carol, yeah. she she knows well aware that if they were drugged and dragged off, they're not going to come back and just let that go. Even characters like um, Ezekiel and Negan, yeah, that is not going to go down well. No, no, not even a little bit. Um, Carol and Daryl then basically go on their kind of, uh, two-person crusade to drop every single stormtrooper they find. Yeah. Um, we have a kind of an interesting situation where Carol realises that probably the best person to get information is going to be Hornsby, who, of course, she very recently double-crossed in a deal with Pamela Milton. Yeah. So they break into the prison to get to Hornsby, and what did you think of that scene when they get there? And you've got little Sebastian Milton, the Walker, just covered in that other guy's guts everywhere, and Hornsby looks pretty messed up, like really mentally checked out. Yeah, he is not in it. Like he's literally sat in the corner, rocking backwards and forwards. Like he is not. No. I can understand why I'm not in a good place if I'm completely honest. Uh, yeah, think, uh, yeah, I'm with you. You know, this is one of your colleagues. Murder him and cut him up, please. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. That's gonna be and he he like he he's dirty. Like there's a lot of blood on him. That was not an easy. No, no. that was clearly not a not a, a neat task. Um, no. what did you think of? Because uh, obviously they're breaking him out. And he says to them, oh, there's just one thing I need to do. We oh, later see was... what that one thing was. What, what, what did you think of that? That was that was savage, wasn't it? I was going to go back and stamp on his head and then put my coin there as a middle finger to Pamela. Yeah, <laughs> I, was like... I mean, because it, it's quite interesting, because obviously me and you, again, talked a lot about the, the kind of relationship between those two. And they're both kind of vying for power. Yeah. Um, but they seem to have this unholy alliance, obviously, until now. Um, so when he did that and left that kind of behind, it, to me, it was like 
that's a very very clear we're done you know <laughs> there is no uh, Milton and Pamela you know there is no Milton and Hornsby anymore yeah I'm out see you later yeah, yeah. I mean it, there, there is no coming back from that at all no um Daryl uh, has to hold up some guards so they can get away. Carol and Hornsby are therefore on their own for a while. And Hornsby just runs his mouth, like, constantly. Did did at any point you think he was getting to Carol? Or, or did you just think that she's doing her sit back and listen, but actually not really listen thing? Like, she's done so many times before. Yeah, it's not. It wouldn't be the first. Like I say it wouldn't be the first time we've seen this happen. No. Um, but yeah, interesting. Maybe. Hornsby takes her into what is described as a murder tunnel, um, <laughs> and, and nearly gets her killed. There's a um, scene there where all of the lights went out, and I was like, "Oh, wait a minute. Was that yeah. was that the moment where it starts going towards the whole double crossing thing? Or yeah." That was, yeah, there was that one scene where it was like, yeah, the light, she drops the torch. Yeah. And uh, the fire, obviously the gunfire is what actually kind of lights up the place. But as we know, the gunfire is going to draw more walkers to water. Yep. And he's disappeared. And I'm like, okay, so in my head, I'm in my head, I've got these two scenarios. One, she's going to have shot him. Yeah. And she's going to be like, oh, shit. Yeah, I kind of needed him. <laughs> oh, I wasn't meant to do that yet. Oh, damn. Or the other side was, she's going to turn around and he's going to have a gun pointed at her like, well, sorry, the way it is. Yeah. And it turns out it wasn't quite the second one, but there definitely felt like a bit of an edge of the fact that he'd got himself up to safety. Yeah. Oh, the lights went out. I couldn't find you. Oh, no. Yeah, I agree. It, oh, it felt no. very... Oh. <laughs> he's going to double cross. Yeah. felt very convenient in that moment. They then leave the tunnel just to run into a patrol. Um, the patrol were sort of about to call it in when Daryl reappears and takes the patrol out. Yes. Um, what what then happens is the two of them are kind of with Hornsby and Hornsby's continuing to just run his mouth. Um, and then he says something about a train. Yeah. And what's interesting to me is everything changes. Because the two of them were kind of, right, come on in Hornsby, let's go, let's go do this. And then he mentions the train and the two of them just stop. Yeah, like, wait a minute, what train? Hold up. Well, to me me, it was like, well, to me it was like, okay, that's the info we needed. Yeah. We don't need you anymore. Yeah, for me it was more a case of, holy crap, they have a train. Huh. Yeah, I suppose. Like, we're um, ten years into the apocalypse and this community has got trains working again. Holy yeah. crap, balls. That's good. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And that I opens sp- up... I mean, realistically, that could open up, like, a lot of America yeah. on a train line. And I'm like, wow. Are we about to see... Again, that little part of me goes, oh, this must be how they're connected to the CRM. Rick! Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, hear, I hear you. Um... What I find interesting is is what happens next, which is, I, I say interesting, I, I'm a little bit, I don't get it, okay? Mm-hmm. So Daryl wanted Hornsby dead, and I mean, was like willing to almost cut his head off in front of Pamela Milton because of how angry he was. Yeah. Daryl clearly doesn't like him. Carol is indifferent to everybody, really. Like, if, if you're not part of her group, she doesn't care if you live or die. I would say that's a fair assessment, yep. <laughs> so, why is it, do you think, when they've got that bit of information they needed, they tell him that he can walk off? It why felt, don't they just put him down? It felt very Rick and Negan. Like, it, just, it just didn't like, make sense. Like, no. when Rick slashed Negan's throat and were like, yes, all the stuff he's done to the group, Rick's killed him, there we go. Yeah. And then he goes the whole save him thing, and everyone kind of sat there and went, Hey, what the... What? That makes no sense. Yeah. Why would you... And then this is the same sort of thing. It's like, well, literally two episodes ago, Daryl was going to kill him. Yeah. And now he's like, no, go on, go, run away. Go live in the wild. Yeah, I mean, he takes all of, what, ten steps, tries to pick up a gun, and Carol kills him. 
with Watch an arrow that. through the throat. We call her Legolas Carol now. <laughs> Legolas, yeah. Uh, that um, was a shot and a half through the throat. Oh. Yeah, I mean, she is very good with that bow. But my, my, my point is, it didn't, it, like, that whole letting him walk, was it just a case of, we know he's going to go for the gun? But then why take that chance? If he had like he to stood get a, right a in front of you. Daryl's yeah. got a gun. Just drop him and walk off. Yeah, it was a bit strange. I don't know. Maybe it was a case of they knew he wouldn't survive out in the wild, so it was kind of like a, a slow death instead of a quick death. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, it did feel very very strange with all the history between the three characters that they'd just be like, go on, off you go. Yeah, no, it, it wouldn't be... It, yeah, so that that kind of I was a little bit that doesn't make sense to me, but um, that that was kind of that episode really. The the end scene of the episode is we see our people um, are on these buses and they've been drugged. We see them actually get injected into the neck. Yeah, um, they've all got sacks over their heads and they're being bussed off out of the Commonwealth. Um, I did think to myself in that moment, it's like, oh, he's mentioned a train. So Daryl and Carol are thinking, right, we got to find a train, whereas they're actually on buses. So even yeah. even when he was like about to die, the little bastard didn't tell the truth. Yeah. Um, but that moves us on to The Walking Dead Season 11, Episode 21. The title of the episode was... Outpost 22. Correct. Um, we open with the uh, one of the buses where... Maggie, Gabriel, and Rosita sort of come to in the back, and the guard who sat with them is fast asleep. Now, if you were ever going to put three people together, yeah. not those three. Yeah, I mean, when <laughs> see, it's kind of a funny thing. We just talked about the Daryl and Carol combination, yeah. and now we're looking at this, and we're kind of like these three. <clears throat> any, any, really, any combination of that original group who was with Rick. They are so entrenched in surviving, like you know, like you say, ten years into the apocalypse, and the vast majority of those ten years have been fighting. Yeah, you know, to to live. These guys, like the way she breaks the the bonds, like she her hands are tied, and she's like, "Yeah, I've had to do this several thousand times." Yeah, this isn't even a challenge anymore. Yeah, it, it just kind of like you're watching it, and you're like, "Yeah." Carol, you know, she she's just gonna take him out. You know, there's no way Maggie's gonna tolerate this. Yeah. Um, we see Gabe and Rosita make the jump off the back of the truck, which is no easy thing. Uh, Maggie hesitates for a moment, which is sod's law, and then the truck kind of hits something, so it jerks her back in, which wakes up the guard. Um, she wrestles with the guard, whose gun goes off and kills the driver, which was really gross, by the way. Yeah, like they really showed to... that guy's face shot to hell. Yeah, it it took me a second or two to fully kind of. I was like, "Damn, he got messed up from crashing into a." Oh no, wait, that does. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was what the was... fire was. Yeah, yeah, and I was kind of like, "Wow, you're really fr-. like someone in visual effects that day was like, look, I've done a masterpiece here. You are gonna show it." Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of gross. Uh, but yeah, the truck does crash. Uh, Maggie then gets away from the truck, um, and so the three of them are at large. They've escaped the busing and the trucks. However, you know, they they've obviously now sort of out in the woods on their own. And the fact that these guys are walking around such like a convoy is not yeah. going to be long before someone goes. Ah, oh, wait a minute. That truck's yeah. gone missing, and it doesn't. It takes literally, like, minutes. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, here come the bikes. Yep, yeah. you're, being, you're being tracked. Yep. You are being tracked and being hunted. I mean, the, the thing about the Commonwealth is they are ridiculously organised. Yeah. Like, it is the equivalent of dealing with an actual military. You know, they are communication hubs. They are talking non-stop. They are checking in. They're all kind of designations. Like, okay, you know, like, number whatever hasn't checked in, so we're going to send people. Um, and they do genuinely seem to care about each other as well, and the welfare. It's not just like, you know, I joke about them being stormtroopers in Star Wars. There ain't no commander who gives a crap about a stormtrooper going missing. Um, in, in this, they are very much like, okay, so-and-so's not checked in, send in a patrol, you know? Yeah. 
So it is kind of difficult. Now, one of the things that happens in this episode, I just want to focus on this for a moment because it was kind of um, not weird, but just kind of a. Uh, it's, it's Maggie. Now, Maggie, when she gets away, has a moment where she runs into a child walker. Um, and obviously, what's just happened is she has been snatched away and separated from her child. Yeah. And so when she sees this walker coming towards her, that is probably, what, do you reckon, like a 10, 12-year-old boy, maybe? I'd say, yeah, it's the same sort of age, and she really struggles. Really struggles. Like, she just avoids it the first time, like, nope, 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 can't put it down, nope, and... And walks off. Um, I just want to say how much fun must that have been for that kid being the walker, by the way, chasing her. Ang, ang, ang. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of funny. Like, okay, kid, yeah, you got to try and bite her. Okay. Yeah. My mum said I'm not allowed to bite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that, that was kind of like a funny visual. But at the same time, I was watching it, I was like, oh, damn, yeah, that can, you, that's going to mess with your head because you're going to be thinking, is, is my son dead? You know, is this is this a kid that was taken as well? You know, your your brain's going to be going a thousand miles an hour trying to, you know, just in absolute dread and terror, really. But the the little child walker, as it is, when she runs into a, a single patrol guy, ends up being quite a helpful little walker because he distracts uh, this this guy on a motorbike enabling Maggie to use, I think it was like a train spike. I um, think so, yeah. Yeah, drive it into the guy's ribs between his armour and then, you know, take him down. And then she is forced, because the walker's all over her, to actually put the kid down as well. Yeah. But she does it in this weird kind of like cradling the child way. It was really quite harrowing, really kind of like, okay, that was really... Yeah, didn't didn't enjoy that. <laughs> no, I, I don't think she enjoyed it much either, if I'm honest. No, because what was kind of interesting is she heard the bike come in and she's in full, like, commando Maggie mode, so she hides, waits. But then there's a jeep coming after that happened that she just doesn't move. She's traumatised. Now, luckily for her, the jeep is actually the, co- the other commando team of Daryl and Carol. Yeah, so that that moment when she's kind of just sat there with the jeeps coming, I'm like, she's got to move, she's got to move, yeah, come on, snap no, out of it. And then yeah, you see Daryl and Carol, she, and you're gone. like, oh, thank goodness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is. I mean, it's very lucky for her. Obviously, obviously, she'd be captured again, but you you do understand it. Like you oh, can yeah. see how traumatized she was. Um, and then seeing Daryl and Carol, I mean, she breaks down on Carol as well, which yeah. You don't see Maggie really do that anymore. You know, Maggie's not someone who's going to show that emotion at any point. So that was quite a strong moment, I thought. Yeah. Um, we we see that Daryl and Carol have spied the train. They found it, and unfortunately, they see Connie is being put onto the train. What did you think to the reaction of Daryl to seeing Connie in danger? Um, because obviously there's the big thing about the you know who do you ship and all that crap, but I I felt that in a scene where Daryl and Carol are together, which of course will please so many people, yeah, he is very focused on Connie. What, what what were your thoughts on that? I liked it personally. I I quite like the the Connie and Daryl kind of aspect of it. Yeah, you know, it's not an in-your-face romantic thing, but at the same time, there's obviously... There's obviously something there. Yeah. Um, they haven't need to kind of splatter it all over the screen sort of thing of, oh, look how in love they all are and stuff. But at the same time, you know, the little bits are there, and I'm quite enjoying that because it seems... It seems a lot more natural that way than the whole, oh, you must make Daryl and Carol romantic because that's what everyone wants. Yeah. The, the Connie-Daryl thing seems a lot more natural and his yeah. reaction he sees her in trouble and he's like instantly like yep that's what i'm doing i'm gonna go get her out that's yeah sorry carol but uh nope i'm gonna go get connie see ya yeah and, and i mean carol kind of has to uh temper that you know just like reminding her you know what kelly said after it yeah i did i did think of you actually when carol mentioned the cave i yeah. did think stefan's gonna be screaming at the tv that was your fault bitch 
Yeah, a little bit, a um, little bit, yeah. Yeah, and you know, but Kelly did say, you know, like, we can't save them if we're dead. Yeah, remember that um, cave that I made everyone follow me into because I was going full psycho nut at the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah that and one. how loads of people could, probably should have died, but and the fact luckily that Connie still hasn't mentioned the fact that, you know, she was left to die by Magna, but apart from that, yep, yep. Yeah. Skipping oh, over okay. that. <clears throat> oh, skipping, skipping over that. Yeah. Um. So it, it kind of, uh, he, he kind of listens. He, he does kind of like take it on board. Now they've got this foot soldier that Maggie's basically killed, and he's dying. He's bleeding out. Um, Gabriel and Rosita also link up because they basically followed the train noise, um, and they reacted in the way that I think you'd love, which was like, "There's a train." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were like just totally did you hear a train there was a train everybody um which, which was kind of fun in, i've in not way. heard one of those for 10 years i know no it was just kind of like this oh my god moment for them can you imagine if an um, airplane went over the top they would lose their minds yeah oh, <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely they would um yeah wait until rick shows up in a helicopter uh, <laughs> but anyway they 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 are kind of reunited and i'm kind of looking at this this team there and i'm thinking yeah that that's a team that could cause a lot of a lot of grief you know oh, that, yeah. that, do you remember the moment um where i think it's terminus and this whole group's thrown in this train car and they're captives and rick's like pacing around and he's like, oh, they don't know what they've done. And everyone's like, well, what do you mean, Rick? He's like, they don't know who they're fucking with. Yeah. And it, it, to me, looking at this group come together, it had that same kind of feeling. That that same kind of, oh, Commonwealth, what have you done? Yeah, like, of you, all the people you could have pissed off and put together. Yeah. You've put almost like the original group together again. Yeah. It's yeah. like... What have you done, mate? <laughs> you know, this is there is not one voice in amongst these people that's going to be maybe we shouldn't kill them all. <laughs> this, yeah. this, 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 this group is going to be like, and how should we kill them all? You've even got um, like the priest there in Gabriel, and even he, we now know, like we've seen him before go oh, full savage. Kind of savage. Now. So, like, they yeah. have no chance really at this point. Oh, no chance at all because of course Coco's missing. Yep. So Gabe is full on. Yeah, let's let's burn them all to the ground and melt them. You know he is. Yeah, he is is kind of yeah. It's great. Now one of the things this revealed the over here on the radio is Connie is designation two, and they're kind of like okay, what does that mean? And they basically finally get this guy to open up and talk. Because Gabriel recognises him as someone who went to church when Gabe was ministering. Oh, yeah. And the guy basically says, like, look, uh, all I know is the train does this. Your people are working on the tracks. Yeah. And designation two, he's like, look, all I've heard is rumours. All I know is that people designated to go to this place and never come back. It's a long way away. You won't see him again. Yeah. Yeah. Now... And... We, we've skipped over just quickly. We've missed out one part of this that really, really upset me. Okay. So there's a moment between Gabe and Rosita. Yeah. Now, if there was ever a time that you needed clear pronunciation... Yeah. This was the damn time, Rosita. How how are you? She says, being better. Being yeah. better. I had to watch that three times and then put the subtitles on just to confirm... That Gabe wasn't really shrugging off the facts. You just said being bitten. Yeah, mate, I was freaking the fuck out at that point. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I realise this is without a doubt one of your favourite characters. Freaking, um, so I, I can completely understand the sheer terror and fear that would be kicking in at that point. Because she's um, kind of like she's all breathless, like, oh, oh yeah, being bitten. What? Yeah. Yeah, because she has that. Uh, he has this moment with her arm as well, which her arm needs to be popped back in. And I, I was kind of looking at the way she was holding her arm, and I was thinking, "Oh no, yeah, oh please, no, that's that's not good." Um, I do, I do fear that we are going to lose a few of these people, though. Oh yeah. So, so start mentally preparing yourself, buddy. Yeah. There's going to you be know. a very, very different Stefan on one of these podcasts coming up. <laughs> just just like whimpering in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> so, and Stefan, what do you think about that? I don't care anymore. Yeah. I'm done. I'm not even watching the finale. There's no point. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
So what did you think of uh what did you think about the assault on the train? I, I um I kind of enjoyed this. This felt a bit kind of action movie but it was kind of fun. Uh including the bike chase of course as well. But I I enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of quite a good fun scene. It was a bit like a western. Like <laughs> yeah, a little bit, western yeah. sort of shootout. And I mean, you got to feel sorry for that guard. Uh, which which the, one in the particular? The guard that gets on the 50cc bike when there was clearly a 750 bike that Daryl jumped on. I mean, yeah, <laughs> feel sorry for that bloke because oh, he thought he was well, getting he, away. He, got, he jumped on a moped. <laughs> he got he got taken out in a way which I oh, like. Brilliant. <laughs> when I say action movie, Daryl launches the bike at him, takes the guy out. I mean, I just loved. That. I mean, I was just kind of smiling. And, and then the cold that. just shoots him and walks off like that. Oh no, he stabs him. As it stabs, stabs him, him, stabs him, walks off. Yeah. Doesn't even you interrogate. Know, even colder. <laughs> no interrogation, nothing. Just, yep, dead. No. Bye. No, just, just, you're not getting <laughs> away. You're not telling people what we did. Yeah. Um, now, the, the scenes around that were kind of great. They rescue Connie, they take out the train with the guards and everything. Yeah. And they've obviously been able to pick up a couple of guns and stuff. So they've been able to equip themselves now. And they have the, like, train engineer. Now, for me, this is where this went really dark. Oh, boy, did it. Yeah. This train engineer is freaking out. Because they're like, look, we just want to ask you questions. And this guy's like, no, you don't understand. If I help you, my family's dead. And they're yeah. like, whoa, 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 you know. <laughs> you I know, love chill Carol's, out. Carol's argument to that is, don't worry. We'll only hurt you a little bit. So it looks like that, there was a I know. struggle. Now, <laughs> I, I loved that the, her that's where her head is. This guy is freaking out. Possibly needs Gabriel to step in with his kind of like, hey, don't worry, my son. Let's just me and you talk, and then we'll decide what best to do. No, no. <laughs> Carol steps in. Don't worry about it, mate. We'll just smash your face in a bit. They, they won't know the difference. We'll stab you in the arm, not the leg. Don't worry. Yeah, Fine. but no, no. But this is why it's so dark. Yeah. The guy literally kills himself in. For me, you've got to be one of the worst ways possible. Yeah. Now, weirdly, me and you had this conversation about medicines the other day, about how some medicines you have to self-inject. Yeah. And how counterintuitive it is yeah. to do that, like to stab yourself, to inject yourself. To do what that guy did, yeah. the level of fear he must have for the Commonwealth. Yeah. I mean, like, we haven't seen anything really to that extent have we like i've not seen anything in the commonwealth that would inspire that level of terror no but clearly there is a something under the scene yeah yeah because yeah, yeah he is full-on i would rather kill myself here and now than in help you and le- grotesque way yeah. or then then help you then, then even think family. that i tried to help you yeah i mean just just wow like that was so dark um, I think I, that kind of links a little bit to this new where Negan and Ezekiel and that lot are. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, yeah, perfectly. So we'll we'll step into that in a second. But the last part of this bit is, which I kind of like, is is Rosita quite smartly calls in because obviously she's aware of how they radio and stuff, and she calls in the fact that she's the lone survivor, and she's lost, and she needs help to get to uh, the near outpost yeah and she gets given direction and but this speaks to what i was talking about before like the the commonwealth care for their troops yeah you know like i'm on my own i'm separate and it's not like well tough shit good luck soldier you know it, yeah. it's like don't you worry do you have your compass this is what we're gonna do this is where we're gonna guide you and stuff like that and i I kind of like that from both aspects. I like the fact that this Commonwealth is definitely some shady crap, but there's still they look after quite, their own. Know, yeah, there's still some good people doing, you know, in amongst that. And I liked the fact that how well thought that plan was of like, okay, well, let's get them to direct us where we need to go. You know, yeah. so so I like that. I thought all of that was kind of good. Now that links in obviously with the finale of the big reveal of outpost 22 but stepping across then like you said the underbelly the kind of the darkness if you like from this appears to be what we're being introduced to via negan ezekiel etc yeah i find this scene there's a guy gets on the bus um and i describe him you know bertie big bollocks gets on 
I don't want to know your names, you don't need to know mine, no one speaks to each other, you don't use names anymore. I'm kind of watching this guy sound off, and I don't know I don't know whether you thought it, I don't know whether it was deliberate. I'm thinking this feels like Negan and the Saviors. Don't it just? Don't it and just? Did you think that Negan saw that as well? Because yeah. he does say to Ezekiel, like, I know this guy's playbook. Yeah. He's looking at this guy and, ah, he's the top dog. Okay, he's going to he's gonna run it the way I ran it. Okay. Yeah. That means... And that's... <laughs> He, and this guy, like, separates a group off, including Negan's wife, and tells them, right, they're being bussed off somewhere else. Yeah. Negan just kind of... T- and I'm kind of like, oh, is he going to say something? He done, he's obviously thinking to himself, I've got to keep my head down here. Yeah. And then um, when he does then, mention it to a guard, he gets a proper backhand. Yeah. Well, I was, I was going to say, and then when Jeez. they're working, he tries... Because he doesn't... Because the thing with that as well is he doesn't like sound off like a Negan sounding off. He basically says, excuse me, sir. You know, he's very polite. He wants to make an inquiry. Yeah. And the guy just beats him like you do not speak. We stop know? for food and sleep and that is yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, but basically what they're saying is, is like you lot have forfeited the Commonwealth, the good part of the Commonwealth. Yeah. You are now kicked out and you will work the rest of your life's labor so the people in the commonwealth can enjoy all the luxuries and i'm kind of like wow so this is it this is the underbelly this is the harsh horrific reality so what exactly are they doing now negan and this group etc appear to be trying to clear a train line um and I'm guessing this is part of them trying to expand what their their the direction their train can go. You know, yeah. um, like you say, being able to access more areas. You know, the more they clear, the the bigger their reach. Um, but that's what they're doing. And there's a scene between Ezekiel and Negan, and in this scene, Ezekiel finally voices what I have been pent up inside rage wise towards Negan for some time yeah and when you heard Ezekiel say it did you did you think the same as me which is like finally someone has finally turned around and told him kind of how it is almost yeah yeah like Negan you know I've avoided you for years you know he's like because I've got nothing to say to you and he lays it out. He's just like, you burnt people's faces with hot irons. You took wives. I mean, he didn't say it, probably to try and keep their TV rating, but it's like, you raped. You know, yeah. you did that. And, and he, he says it to him, and I'm like, yes. Finally, one of the characters has picked, up, has picked out the fact that, like, I don't forgive you for this. Like, everyone else might be willing to move on. I'm not. Yeah. Like, there is no part of me that's going to forgive you. And let's be honest, yeah, the kingdom was probably one of those places that was most battered yeah. on by Negan and these people. So, yeah, it makes so much sense that Ezekiel hasn't just kind of rolled no. over and gone, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He, he has not forgotten at all. And, and Negan, <clears throat> and to his credit, just kind of goes like, yeah, I remember all of that too. And he's like, you know, he tries to make the point of, I made those mistakes. I and I have to live with it. Yeah. Um. I, so I really like that interaction. I thought that interaction was brilliant. Now, there's something that's said in amongst this. Is Negan's like, look, people here need to. You know, we got the numbers, but they've got us separated. They've got us beat down. People need hope, and that's you. You know, Ezekiel, that is you. You can do yeah. that. And, and Ezekiel makes the point, it's like, look, I can't talk. You know, if I could talk to people, gather them together, then yeah, you're right. But I can't, you know, there's, they've stopped me from being able to do that. So it needs to be like a, uh, you know, something needs to happen that everybody can witness and everybody comes together. And Negan basically says to him, like, okay, I can give you that, but it probably means I'm not getting out of here. Yeah, that was quite... Uh... He he almost kind of admits that yeah, like I am sacrificing myself. Yeah, and it's like, is this the kind of part of me goes? Oh, this is the Negan kind of redemption thing, and then I go, oh no, wait, spin off. 
that that yeah that for me is unfortunately another byproduct of announcing the spin-offs before the main show ended it's it's annoying yeah. because like you when i when i heard him say that i thought to myself i sort of wrapped my head through and thought i see what he's going to do he's going to do something to sacrifice himself publicly people are going to see it and be inspired by it and that's that's what his plan is yeah and that will kind of the irony of Negan being killed by a guy behaving like Negan, you know, it, it kind of like full circle. That's going to be a a full arc, and then his wife can go on have his chart. You know, yeah, he knows that he will live on. If you know what I mean, she will live on. And so I'm kind of watching that, and I'm thinking to myself, that's really interesting. And then like you, I just went, oh, but I know he doesn't die. Yeah. So what exactly is going to happen? Uh, you know, he's he's he has literally got plot armor right now. So yeah, I I um I don't know. I was a little a little bit frustrated by that, but at the same time, trying to focus just purely into the scenes, I thought it was a really great scene between those two. Yeah. Um, we see some people try to escape and they're just gunned down as well, which was really ice cold. Oh mate, when, um, um, yeah, because she's gonna make Kelly's gonna make the run for it. Yeah, and then doesn't, and you're like, oh, why is she not? And then you realise that Ezekiel knows exactly what's about to happen. Yeah, and he's like, no, no, no. And she comes yeah. back, and it's like, it, there's almost a look on Ezekiel's face of like, told you, don't be stupid. Yeah, yeah no, you, they're not wrong. Uh, the troopers that are there, they are accurate. You know, you, they are, they do put down walkers. They do put down. You know, you, there's another scene where they're basically being reloaded into the buses it's the end of the day and you see some walkers coming up and this this one of the guards just boom puts them down and you can see the look on kelly's face of like oh wow crap yeah yeah maybe <laughs> we can't I, get out of this one yeah maybe if i try and run i'll just be gunned down which which is obvious is what will happen now we now have these scenes going on so they're packed back on the buses and they're being driven off to outpost 22 um, Outpost 22 has been revealed to Rosita as well um, of, over the radio and so we have this scene of them on the bus heading to this outpost whilst we have that voiceover this for me was one of the most fun reveals because I hadn't worked out <coughs> and I, no I uh, hadn't had you, no. no and the, there was a moment where they're at this gate and there's this big Outpost 22 written on Come it. And I'm looking at yeah. it, and it's genuinely right. I looked at it and went, oh, bloody hell, I, I think they're using the same gates as they did for Alexandria. <laughs> so bloody in my hell, mind, I'm thinking... A lot, aren't they? For yeah, reason, God, you know. But then on the left, there's like this sign that's like, Alex, and I'm sure I read Alexandria. And I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. And then they said over the radio, like, oh, yeah, I think some of these people even used to live there when it was called Alexandria. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, wait a minute. You've taken them back home? You have taken... Because there's there's two... No, actually, there's three aspects to this that I loved. One, the reveal. I thought the reveal that Outpost 22 was Alexandria was just yeah, really well I've, done. I've just got the picture up here. Yeah, it's the Alexandria Processing Centre on the side yeah. next to it. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be Alexandria's safe zone. Yeah, they've replaced. So, so I was like, first thing that reveal was great. I was like, that's that's really great. Yeah. The second thing is, that means that Pamela Milton, when she did that deal with Carol, was full of shit. Yeah. Because she told them all, "Can I have all your supplies? You can go home. It's yours." They have taken. That's not happened in a day. They have taken Alexandria and have built that into Outpost Twenty Two. Yeah. They have, you know, done that. There is no... That was not going to be handed back to Carol, etc. So that means that deal was bullshit from day one, from yeah. minute one. So that's the second part. But the third part, and the third part, I think, which is the the fun kind of aspect, is that's their home. Yeah. They, they know that place better than anybody. That you have... Literally, you know, Maggie, Carol, Daryl are sat there, Rosita, Gabe, looking at each other like, oh, oh, damn. Oh, it's on. Yeah. Oh, you guys screwed up now. Yeah. Uh, and again, I, I, I kind of love that. I, I really, really love that. 
So, I mean, that's it. That's our show. Um, both episodes covered. Uh, you know, it was kind of a quick walk through, but that was what was required to do our catch up. Um, how are you feeling about the show, etc., right now? Because obviously, we are motoring towards the end, and it feels like we're not really near an end. Yeah, so we've got three episodes left we've got Faith, Family, and then the untitled finale. Yeah. Um, so I, I was talking actually before we started podcasting today on our Discord server. Yeah. Uh, to a couple of people on there. I think it's mainly Mike. He talks a lot about the Walking Dead with us. And yeah, it, it doesn't feel like the end is coming. Like, remember when, when they did that whole stupid thing of advertising Rick's final episodes? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. everyone was like, why would you tell us that? Like, you've just. Why would you tell us about Rick's final episodes? Why not yeah. have it happen without us knowing and everyone be like, oh my God, what's just happened? Yeah. Whereas with this one, it kind of feels like they've told us it's the end, but it doesn't feel like the end in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Like, they've only just got to the outpost. They've got three episodes left and we're now expecting there to be a big-ass battle between the Alexandrians and the Commonwealth. Yeah. You've got to assume the Commonwealth is going to fall. You've got to assume Maggie, Rosita are going to get their kids back. You've got yeah. to assume that Daryl's going to get Judith back. Um, you've got to assume Aaron's going to get back to his kid. Yeah. You've then got to realise that actually at the moment, Aaron, Jerry and that lot are off somewhere because they've just met the variants. Yeah. Now surely they've not just brought the variants in for one zombie to climb a ladder and pick a weapon up. And then nothing else to happen with that again. Yeah. So there's surely got to be something built in from that. And then you've also got the spin-offs that we know are coming up. So something's got to happen for Negan and Maggie to head off to DC. And for Daryl to... To New York. Uh, to New York, sorry. And then Daryl's got to head off to Europe on his own. Yeah. And I'm like, nothing at the moment is making me go, Oh yeah, that's how that's going to work. And no. we've only got three episodes left. Yeah. I'm really getting concerned. I know you feel the same. Like, this is not going to feel like an ending. It's going to feel like a... Not even a season finale. Like It almost feels like a mid-season break. Yeah. You know, like, we know it's going to be the last episode for a while, but we know things are going to carry on. So instead of feeling like a fina- season finale, it seems yeah. like a mid-season finale. Yeah. And in which case, that means that episode 23 is going to be lots of death, because that's what always used to happen. Yeah. But yeah, it just seems it seems really strange. I, I agree. I agree. The feeling is is kind of odd. Um, but uh, focusing episode by episode, I am enjoying the show right now. I am. Um, no, yeah, I agree with that. Which there there have been there have been times where I haven't. So <laughs> it's been entire um, seasons. <laughs> yeah. So so I am enjoying it episode by episode. So I'm going to ask you this, and I'm probably going to ask you each week as we head into that finale. Do you think Rick's going to return for the finale? Now, you sent me a picture, actually, didn't you? IMDb has yeah, got I, a I wasn't synopsis. Gonna, I wasn't, wait, wait, wait. I wasn't going to talk about it on the podcast because I didn't want to wreck this for people. Uh, well, I, I say you say wreck it for people. I kind of wanted to open up a bit of a debate on it. I'm only okay. going to read the last sentence of the synopsis. Okay. Okay is perhaps a familiar face can help them out. Yeah. Now, that's been written to make every single Walking Dead fan go, Ha! Oh, Rick's coming back! There's Rick! Yeah, Rick! But at, yeah. at this point, considering we know that Jerry, Aaron and that lot are off somewhere, yeah. Connie, uh, not Connie, uh, Lydia is off with that group, and uh, we also know that like there's little factions everywhere that are kind of being broken off and stuff, I'm like... Is that going to be a sellout? Is that going to be the one that gets us going, oh my God, it's going to be Rick. And actually like Michonne turns up at the end without Rick and everyone's sat there going, what? Well, I don't know. I'd like to see Michonne. I'd like to see um, Michonne back. But yeah, I, I wonder if that's going to be a proper sellout of, oh, familiar well, face I mean, to I, help I was, out. It's got to be Rick. I was just after your opinion, really. Do you think we're going to see Rick? Um, No, is my honest opinion. Okay. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I, I'm, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I was convinced, like a few weeks ago, I was convinced. Um, and then uh, Angela Kang has now revealed that the ending of the shows was changed. Um, 
and I'm not sure that it. I'm not sure now. That apparently, what they originally shot as the final scene was changed in post production. So. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe after next week. Maybe after next week, I'll have more of an inkling. But at the moment. Oh, that's no. that's big news. See, one of the main reasons why I felt we were going to get Rick is because at the start of every episode, there's been this real focus on the past. And Rick obviously features prominently in all of that. Because it was the Rick Grimes story, really. Yeah. Um, And so, yeah, I don't know. There's been a part of me that thinks that's been helping us build towards... Towards him returning. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see... I would, honestly, I would love to see it. I really would. Yeah. I just don't know if we will. No, I'm with you. Okay, so that is our show. A massive thank you to everybody for listening. We will be back next week to discuss the next episode of The Walking Dead. Until then, everybody, you all take care. And that's a wrap. If you've enjoyed this show and other shows on the Stuff and Things podcast, why not join us on our Discord server? That's right, we have a Discord server now full of people like-minded to yourselves and the presenters here, all talking about your favourite shows, including Marvel, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones and many, many more. Just check our social media pages and you will find the link to this week's invite to join our Discord server and chat to many other people all about your favourite stuff and things. Thank you for listening to the Stuff and Things podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us on Facebook or online. Simply search the Stuff and Things podcast to join in our conversation every week. <laughs>